So it says, okay, I, it doesn't have any pictures. So let me draw some pictures as I'm reading the question. It says for a square loop, uh, it's gonna be placed in a uniform magnetic field, find the current needed to create a maximum. Um, yeah, right. So let me imagine a region of magnetic field. So um, I like to draw it kind of vertically. The, you know, it, it, the question doesn't constrain you anyway. So your own illustration of the magnetic field can be either way. I just like the vertical one. Uh, so let's just say this is my magnetic field and it does say the word uh, maximum torque because the amount of torque on the, on the loop will depend on its orientation. So I want to imagine having a loop um, that's, uh, that, um, that's uh, lying horizontally. So that would uh, look like a loop that from the, this view looks something like this. And so what it would be, uh, so let's say on the, on the nearer side, there's a current that's say, let's, going, let's say going from right to left. And so there's on the nearer side, there's a current that's going this way. And then on this end, it'll go, um, let's see, it'll go into the page. <laughs> I'm trying to, um, and then on the farther side, it'll go from left to right. And on this side, it'll be coming out of page. And I want to imagine this uh, loop that is able to rotate around an axis that's going through the middle, um, you know, either into the page or out of the page. So this is one orientation. And um, I think I am going to get the position of, uh, or the maximum torque between either this position or this position. So let me draw this uh, position B, which is where this loop has turned 90 degrees. Um, so let's say on the side of the loop that's near to you, the current is going up. And at the top, the current is going into the board or into the page. And then on the farther side, the current is going down. And then at the bottom, the current is coming uh, towards you. So if you imagine taking this loop and turning it 90 degrees, uh, 90 degrees turn, that's uh, what you would get here. So I think between these two A and B positions, I'll get um, maximum torque. So let me just uh, work through them. The first thing to do would be to draw a kind of free body diagram that will help me determine which of the two positions will give me the maximum torque. So I can just uh, focus on that one to finish the calculation there. So in all of these, I'm going to be using basically this one formula, which is that force due to the magnetic field on a current carrying loop or sorry, current carrying wire is given by amount of current I, always positive, times L. And this L is a vector quantity. It's defined so that it has the magnitude of the length of the wire and it has the same direction as the current. Uh, cross product with B, uh, magnetic field B. So um, this uh, formula is equivalent to the other expression for the magnetic force that you have seen. Magnetic force on a moving electric charge is Q times V cross B. And your textbook does the derivation of how this is equivalent to that. And I'm not sure if it does vice versa, they're equivalent. So uh, for each segment of a wire, I'm basically going to be um, using the right-hand rule uh, to the cross product to figure out the direction of the uh, force. And um, so this, in this portion, I'm gonna be glancing at my second screen often because I want to make sure as I orient my hand, when I say I'm, say I'm pointing to the right, that it points right on your screen. And um, so, when it's pointing this way, out of the screen from your perspective is what I'm gonna uh, match as out of screen. It's kind of reversed for me, but I'll figure this out. So, so let me start with this portion of the wire. 
So this portion of the wire, it's going into the screen. So it should be going in. So the current is going in. So that's also going to be the direction of the L, the way we define it. So we orient my, I orient my hand until I can do L uh, cross I, or sorry, B, magnetic field is upward. So my force points to the uh, points to right. So uh, for this portion of the wire, the force is rightward. And let me do the this portion of the wire here. That's the far end. The current is flowing from left to right. Um, so that's my so left to so this is the direction of the first vector, L cross left to right. Oh, wait. Uh, this is the direction of the first vector, um, uh, L, uh, and I orient it so that I can curl my fingers in the direction of second vector, magnetic field B, and the cross product points out of the board. So for this segment, the force is pointing out of the board. And this segment here, I can kind of guess it's going to point to left. And if I do cross product, then uh, first out of the screen and then cross B, and that thumb points to the left. So, um, and this uh, final segment here, uh, right to left, <laughs> current flowing right to left. That's gonna be uh, wait, it's left to right, <laughs> right to left. <laughs> so right to left, uh, cross B. So the thumb points into the screen. So that's gonna be actually, yeah. And this is what I why I want you to figure out the directions first when you add up the, all these directions of force. I think, uh, so as you consider that entire picture, uh, I hope you get this sense that um, those directions of forces don't seem to be making the loop rotate. And that's right. Uh, in this position, there's no torque on the loop. There's, um, so, so, so position A is not the one that's going to lead to the maximum torque. So I'm pretty sure the one that will lead to maximum torque is position B. So let me go through this exercise again. So at the top, current is flowing. So at the top here, current is flowing into the screen. So into the screen cross B. So I'm, you know, you can see my fingers, but I'm orienting so that my fingers bend upward. Um, so my thumb points to uh, right when I do that. So that's a, uh, um, so that this is the direction of the force, IL cross B. And the currents are going straight up and straight down. They're not going to result in any force at all, actually, because these are in the same direction as the magnetic field or 180 degrees. And um, the useful thing to remember about this is that the magnitude of the force is given by IL B sine theta where theta is the angle between the two vectors. So when theta is zero or 180 degrees, the magnitude is zero, which is great because uh, applying, trying to apply right-hand rule with these will give you like, you don't know how you should be orienting your hand to be able, so it's good that uh, force is zero. So you don't have to worry about direction. This uh, bottom segment here, um, you have a uh, current flowing uh, out of the screen, so uh, flowing out of the screen, uh, cross B, so your force points to the left. That's gonna be, oh yeah, and this looks like that's uh, going to be something that causes it to rotate. You can consider the uh, middle to be the center of rotation, and this is gonna be the lever arm for the first force. This is going to be the level arm for the second force, the same if you pick this to be at the midpoint. And yeah, so let me uh, let me do that. Uh, let me work out an expression. So I'm just going to first going to write down an expression for the net torque. And uh, I'll solve it for the current since the question is asking for the current. So, so I'm still, even though this is a somewhat unusual of a question, I'm still applying the same uh, general physics problem solving approach, which is I use the information given in the question to first uh, write down a system of equations, in this case, system of one equation, and I'm solving it for the unknown. So 
the my net torque is. Um, so I have this free body diagram. This is more or less a free body diagram. Uh, let me make let me make a clockwise positive and counterclockwise negative. Wait, they are both clockwise, right? Let me just make a clock. I, I mean, so counterclockwise would have been negative, but both forces are clockwise, so both will be positive. Um, so then I'm just gonna be adding the uh, the torque due to each force. So let me give these labels. Does 10 centimeter on a side? Um, call that S. Oh, and it's telling me there's a 35 turns. Uh, let me call that N. And how that's important is wherever I have force, uh, thinking force is um, current times L cross B with the number of turns that are greater than one. So this is the calculation for one segment of the wire. I have N number of those. So my actual force is gonna be this times N because I have N number of them that's all flowing in the same direction. So they are all adding. So with that, let me write down the expression for my net torque. It's gonna be uh, current times um, L the level, um, wait, no, no, L is the length of the wire. So um, L is, so it's just going to be straight wide, uh, straight away S yes. um, um, times B times sine theta. And theta in this case is, yeah. So there are multiple angles here. So um, let me do this carefully. So um, I, I think I've said this enough. Magnetism is complicated. Um, so this theta here, is the angle between uh, vector L and B. And there's another uh, cross product here that I won't explicitly consider, but it's in the background, which is the, the one that defines the torque. Torque is R cross F. And so magnitude of torque is R, F, sine, let me give it a different letter, phi. And this angle here is the angle between the R, displacement, displacement vector, and F, the force. Now, in this particular setup, for this maximum torque arrangement, things are going to get simple because these angles, they are both 90 degrees. Just by fortunate accident, um, they are the same 90 degrees. So if you had mistakenly not distinguished them correctly, then it won't result in an answer that will get marked as wrong. But in some sense, that's actually worse because you could be mixing them up and you might not realize that you are mixing it up. <laughs> so let me, so I just spelled it out so that I will, even though I could mix it up, if that I won't mix it up. <laughs> so first I need to write down the force. So the force is going to be, uh, uh, so let me write down the force here on the side. Force is going to be N, the number of turns times current times L, uh, that's S, the length of the side, times B, the magnetic field that's given here. Um, and it's going to be sine theta. And here, if you look at the current, the current is pointing uh, into the screen and magnetic field is pointing up. So they are 90 degrees. So the sine theta is simply going to be one. So that's the amount of the force at the top of the loop. Amount of force at the bottom of the loop is the exact same force here. So, so, um, so I can just use this expression as force F as I write down my net torque. So when I might write down my net torque, um, it's gonna be, let me label this one and two. It's gonna be the lever arm for one 
times the force for one, um, that's uh, the magnitude of R cross F, you know, R sine feet would be the level R, plus the level arm for two times the force at two. And in this particular case, both of these uh, work out to be simple. The level arm for both of them, you saw me draw it here, it, they're going to be both uh, one half S or S over two the half of the length of the square loop, or that's the length of the side of the square loop. So, oh, so I guess uh, given that the forces are the same, I can just combine the two to get uh, S times the force, uh, which would be N I S B. So uh, there are two factors of S, so it's gonna be N I S squared times B. Um, okay, uh, and I'm actually given the net torque. So my unknown here is actually the current. So I can solve for the current as current is the net torque divided by N S squared B. Pretty simple expression. Um, I guess, um, you could easily wonder if uh, um, if the, I hope you wonder if the units are correct here. Um, and the truth here is the working out unit here is a bit of a tedious work. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna use Wolfram Alpha. So I'm gonna plug in the numbers that are given to me with the unit. Uh, so I'm given the, the torque of 12 Newton meter divided by n, that's unitless number, 35 times the length of the side, 10 centimeter squared. I'm gonna, I'm going to let uh, Wolfram Alpha do all the convergence uh, times B magnetic field in Tesla, 0 0.95 Tesla. And when I press enter, hopefully I get coulombs per second because if I didn't, I did something wrong. And yeah, coulombs per second or ampere. Ampere or, hey, where's my coulombs per second? Yeah, ampere is coulombs per second. So I get 26.09 ampere. So, um, and what it is is a Tesla can be expressed in terms of apparently Newton meters and amperes. <laughs> It's a, um, and you know, units in electromagnetism can get a little bit gnarly. Um, I do have a lecture video that uh, teaches you how to navigate these units. You do it basically by memorizing the equations, memorizing the, the defining equations, not, um, not other uh, things like, uh, yeah. So I guess since I have the number, I might as well plug it in 26.1, uh, sorry, 36.1. Okay, 